Hello and welcome to Castle's Corner. I'm Coach Castle, and today we got a long awaited video. We are going to be doing abs for the Red Pill of Resistance series exercise, and as always, with every muscle in your body, there is only one perfect exercise, one perfect movement pattern, and of course, a perfect number of repetitions depending what you're trying to achieve. In this video, I'll be clearing up the myths, misconceptions, and misinformation about ab training. No, you cannot train your lower abs. No, you don't even have lower abs. No, you cannot convert a four pack into a six pack. No, performing endless crunches will not help you spot reduce the fat in your midsection. All of those topics and more will be addressed and demonstrated scientifically so you can see and understand why and how you are wrong and learn the correct exercise which is actually the one you need to be doing at the end. Now with that being said guys, let's go ahead get into the video. Hopefully you'll learn something and you can apply it to your life and your own training. And uh, as always, please hit the like, share, subscribe. It helps the channel grow. Leave a comment if you found this helpful. Again, it helps with the algorithm. Thank you, guys. Everyone have a great day. Let's get into the video. It should be stated before we begin that abdominal exercise will not diminish the fat that is in one's midsection. The layer of body fat that obscures the clarity of the abdominal muscle can only be reduced or eliminated as a whole body process. You cannot spot reduce. You cannot lose fat in only one area of your body, and you certainly cannot choose the area where that fat will be dissipated from. Body fat is dissipated as a whole body process. When the calorie demand exceeds that calorie intake, and the body is forced to use its body fat stores to compensate for the fuel shortage. The type of exercise you perform and the types of food that you consume also play a role in the reduction of body fat. Abdominal definition only improves as part of a reduction of total body fat. A person can improve their abdominal definition without doing any abdominal exercise whatsoever, simply by reducing their total body fat percentage level. This is the rationale that compels people to attempt to work out their lower abs, and it is entirely baseless. They either want to lose body fat in the lower region of their abdomen, or think that they can add more notches to their abs, or convert a four pack into a six pack, or a six pack into an eight pack somehow, but neither is possible. There's no such thing as a separate lower ab muscle. You cannot convert a four pack into a six pack, no matter how hard you try, nor what exercise you do. The configuration of each person's abs, shape, and number is genetic, and it is as unique as your fingerprints and everything else. Now on to talk about how some of the people who believe that leg raises work the lower abs rationalize this belief by stating that even though the lower abs do not actually pull the legs upwards, the pelvis is pulled upwards towards the ribcage instead of pulling the ribcage downward towards the pelvis. They seem to think that bringing the origin of the abs on the pubic bone towards the insertion on the base of the ribcage will emphasize the fibers that are closer to the origin. This is extremely misguided and wrong. There are the origins of the rectus abdominis were deemed to be on the pubic bone and not on the rib cage. The origin of any muscle is classified that way because that's the more stable or less mobile of the two ends. The insertion end of a muscle is attached to the more mobile part of the skeleton, the part that moves easier. It is much easier to hold the hips and legs still and bring the ribcage downward towards the pelvis, as in a standard crunching movement, than it is to hold the ribcage still and bring the pelvis upward toward the ribcage, as in, in a leg raise or a hip thrust movement. There is no benefit whatsoever in attempting to bring the pelvis towards the ribcage. Furthermore, when we do the leg raises, we engage the hip flexors in a big way. The weight of the legs is significant and requires a tremendous amount of effort on the part of the hip flexors to pull the legs upwards. The primary hip flexor, the psoas, originate on the lower spine. Therefore, heavy load activation on the psoas naturally causes the origin of the psoas to be forcefully pulled forward, thereby causing the spine to arch. Spinal arch is the opposite of what the abs are trying to do, which is to flex 
or forward bend the spine. As a result, the abs are unable to reach full contraction shortening because the psoa is preventing it with the spinal flexion. Now everyone has been led to believe that it's better to use three or four different exercises for training the abs when in fact the abs only do one thing and that's spinal flexion as I just addressed. The most common exercise for the abs is the standard abdominal crunch but for most people this version is too difficult. Specifically the position of the torso relative to gravity maximizes the resistance beyond most people's strength level. This typically results in an ability to use proper form and also an inability to perform enough repetitions. This is why we often see people doing what appears to be head lifts, mostly moving their necks, hardly lifting the shoulders and upper back off the ground. Now, of course, this is wrong. And of course, even if you do it correctly, in the correct version, the upper half of the torso is the operating lever of the abs, and it is 100% perpendicular with the resistance in the starting position. Therefore, the entire weight of your torso is the weight you're trying to move. And for most people, this is simply too much resistance. It's a lot like trying to do a standing barbell curl with a barbell that is so heavy that you cannot use full range of motion, you're forced to use momentum, cannot do enough repetitions, and it makes you hate the exercise. Now this is exactly what happens when people try to do ab crunches while on a flat surface. They have incomplete range of motion, therefore they're only moving their necks, they look ridiculous. They do insufficient repetitions because it's difficult, lower back discomfort due to the position, and generally getting no results and hating the exercise, not doing it anyways. And all of this is due to the very simple fact that the resistance at this particular angle is far too heavy for them. It's not that the exercise is too hard, only the resistance or the torso weight using this particular angle is excessive. Okay, now let's talk planks. Planks are completely isometric. There is no rectus abdominis elongation or shortening during this exercise. If isometric tension were optimally productive for muscular development, we would be using it on all of our other exercises for all of our muscle groups, but we don't, and for good reason. We do not use isometric exercise for any other exercise for any other muscle group because it is not as productive as dynamic exercise. During planks, there is also isometric tension in the quadriceps and hip flexors, but again, this type of muscle contraction is not as productive as dynamic exercise. Therefore, you'd be spending your energy on your quads and hip flexors, but without the benefit that could be achieved using exercise that involves movement. Planks would be an acceptable alternative if you have a spinal injury which prevents spinal movement. Otherwise, it's simply not as productive as an exercise that employs dynamic movement like ab crunches. So this further highlights the value of performing a basic ab crunch movement, allowing the insertion of the rectus abdominis to move towards the origin, which is the more natural function of the abs anyways, without engaging the hip flexors, which is a conflict of interest. Now, as mentioned, the basic crunching movement is usually too hard for most people due to their torso weight being too heavy of a resistance. You should be able to choose the appropriate resistance level for this exercise, just as you do with all of your other exercises. The resistance level should allow you to do 20 repetitions with full range of motion, yet challenging enough so that 20 represents about 70 to 80 percent of your maximum effort. Now there are two different ways to uh, accommodate for this resistance problem. The first would be an incline bench ab crunch. It's a very good option due to the fact that using an inclined angled bench allows you to reduce the resistance enough so that you can do the exercise with proper form. That means using full range of motion with a deliberate contraction of the rectus abdominis at the conclusion of each repetition. This is no different than the goal of each and every other exercise that you perform for any other muscle group that we would typically exercise. The abs are no different at all. So in order to control the resistance level or the weight you will actually be crunching, you simply need to play with the incline angle. This is between a 30 and 40 degree angle which should be good for most people. However, if this is still too difficult for you to perform 20 repetitions with good form, simply elevate the angle to a higher degree, 40, 50, 60 degrees. Make sure you're able to perform them exactly as is shown, slowly and controlled. If you'd like to be more comfortable or even more precise, or perhaps you need more weight than what your body torso can provide, then you would be able to perform cable crunches. 
The primary advantage of using cable resistance is that you can choose precisely the amount of weight that you'd like on the operating muscle. So you can choose less or more depending. Now here I am performing a seated cable crunch. As you can see, I am sitting mostly upright on a back supported bench and my lower back does not come off the bench. Notice also that I've set the height of the pulley so that the direction of the cable is fairly perpendicular with the torso in the starting position. The primary advantage of using cable resistance is that you can choose precisely the amount of resistance that feels appropriate for 20 or 30 repetitions. Hey guys, and thanks for watching the video. Just real quick, I'd like to remind you all to please like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment as it does help with the algorithm. I put a lot of work into these videos, a lot of my time, and again, it's all for you, it's all for free, so you can learn the proper way to do things. You no longer need a personal trainer or coach, so please guys, help me out. Every little percentage, of course, helps. Now, yes, you can, guys. Go start activating yourself, working on these things, working it out, working on your diet, building your life. Yes, you can, guys. Yes, you can. Now, go get after it, whatever it takes.